Um, AA's role has been to identify and bring together the consortium partners for this project. We identified the right manufacturers um, who could deliver the objectives for the Technology Strategy Board and we've been managing the project to ensure that it um, meets those aims and goals. For AEA, the most important aspects of this programme is being able to showcase um, innovation in British technology for electric vehicles, um, showing what the UK can do and pushing the boundaries of technology for high performance electric cars. Um, AEA works on um, a lot of policy areas for the government, so what AEA is hoping to get out of this project is being able to further inform that work. Um, through the data that we collect around user perception, what people think about the cars, um, how people use those cars and inform decision makers within government. The Ultra Low Carbon Vehicle Demonstration is one of the programmes that the Technology Strategy Board has funded uh, which is aimed at bringing about 340 electric vehicles to the road so they can be used for 12 months uh, so manufacturers, energy companies and infrastructure providers can learn how people use their cars, how they charge them up and how they feel about driving electric cars. I just like to see the fact that we learn something from the way people drive, who like performance uh, cars drive their cars, drive the electric cars and how they charge them up, how they use them. So that these companies that are involved in the consortium can learn about those and actually develop technologies for the future low carbon vehicles. Uh, the TSB in Transport is aimed at uh, supporting UK innovation so that we can help them commercialise that innovation uh, so that basically we can uh, develop wealth for the UK. So the innovation is developed and money comes back into the UK through them being able to get into the global market. The Eames Accelerate programme in three words, exciting, innovative and above all British. The inspiration behind the Delta Motorsport E4 Coupe was basically to produce a car that is ultra efficient and lightweight. The design process started with styling sketches, so it was a clean sheet of paper, styling sketches and then you work around packaging model to ensure that you can get all of the occupants in and all of the batteries in and all of the key components. And then we go through a process of computational fluid dynamics which is basically simulation of airflow via the computer to make sure the car is aerodynamically as efficient as possible. One element would be the unique aspect of packaging large components into a very small space using standard proprietary parts as well as, off, as, well as bespoke parts. The other element is the carbon composite monocoque structure which nobody else has done before um, to this scale. So that, I would say, are the key unique features. The touchscreen interface is quite quirky, uh, takes a lot of interest. But I think really the, the, the doors, the going door, they seem to draw a lot of attention. The, uh, the car is a head turner and then when you open the door, that for me is a key feature. In. Um, the ambition for the car and the long-term project is First of all, to make electric cars more desirable to the general public, um, but for the E4 Coupe in particular, it would be to team up with a manufacturer who can take it through into some sort of volume production and, uh, and do the car justice. Electric, high performance, fast. I'm no Jeremy Clarkson, I want to be clear about that, but I am a bit of a petrol head and I'm a tree hugger as well. I spend my life building windmills and fighting climate change, driving fast cars. 
what am I going to do about it? It's, it's a big contradiction. It's the kind of contradiction we all face in our lives. How do we live more sustainably? We know we have to. And how do we have fun at the same time? It can't all be sandals and lentils, can it? I don't think so. So what I'm going to do about it is build a wind-powered car. It'll be an electric car, charged from the wind, so there's zero emissions from it. Uh, but it's not going to be the kind of electric car that we're all used to at the moment. You know, those things that Noddy might be proud of that you know, do 30 miles an hour, they're basically a crap. It's going to be a sports car, 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, more than 100 miles an hour, and a range of 150 miles, something practical. That's it, that's the challenge, a wind-powered car. The inspiration behind the Lightning All Electric GT Supercar has to come from where I lived in London. What I felt these people wanted, they wanted to look good and feel good. So if we could offer them that and emission free as well, there's a market for our car. 2008, we picked up Penn and designed this car. Um, it keeps one part from the old car, which is a windscreen, everything else is new. The twin pods at the rear uh, are definitely very, you know, I wouldn't say unique, very distinctive. The chassis, which obviously you can't see, but that is truly innovative. What the engineers have achieved there is remarkable. And the platform is ideal for higher volumes, whatever a different model. Um, but this car will always adhere to 250 units a year to be truly exclusive because exclusivity is what you want when you have a supercar. You don't want everybody else driving the same car. There are innovations throughout the car which are both mold breaking but also we are improving them before the car goes to market. Secondly, the car is highly exclusive. Exclusive, you want exclusivity, as I mentioned before. Thirdly, it's a true supercar. It sits at the, above the normal sports cars, at the top of the list of all electric supercar. And the word supercar means it's extra special, high performance, looks good, feels good, goes great, supercar. started as all good things to do in a pub, having a chat about what could we do next, um, how could we build on the experience, not just in Westfield but also in some of the partner companies of Westfield, and how we could take that and demonstrate that so that everyone benefits, not just Westfield obviously with product but also the other companies in terms of showing their capabilities. The inspiration for the Westfield Sportee is to show what the technology can do and to demonstrate the capabilities of our business, really, to show that we're not, not just about making cars, but making cars which are exciting and different. The most unique is the battery system, because uh, we have a contact to every 50 volts, which means that the car is completely safe when it's switched off. If you have a crash, there's no high voltage left in the car. The feature I'm most proud of, the battery system, the battery management, and really the packaging, I suppose, it's like the, the, the bigger picture of trying to squeeze a lot of battery, um, 340 kilos of battery, plus motor, controller, cooling system into a car which is very small and quite tight from packaging perspective. Our ambition with the car is to take it to production within the next two to three years, maybe sooner if, if the uh, data we get from the trial is, is really you know, positive in terms of reliability, and then to develop upon it, take the power claim to new vehicles um, that we develop. Describe my car in three words, um, green, very green. Yeah, I think that's, that's a pretty good description. <laughs>